Uh, Luke chapter 15, we're in a series called Sons Not Servants. And we're talking about the prodigal son returned and when he returned, the father gave him three gifts. And those three gifts represent something that the father gives us when we are sons and daughters, not servants. And so last week we talked about the robe. This week we're gonna talk about the ring. So Luke 15 verse 22 says, but the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and then next week will be in shoes on his feet. And so what I did was I took the robe, the ring and shoes, I went through scripture and say, to look at what they represent spiritually. And just showing you a few verses last week that the robe represents righteousness, that he robes us with righteousness. A ring represents authority. So this week, the message is called the ring of authority. God gives us authority. And again, I wanna declare and make it clear that it's by grace, through faith. God gives us this authority. But we're gonna talk about can we, even as sons and daughters, not walk in the authority that God gives us? Let me show you a couple of scriptures to show you how the ring represents authority in scripture. Genesis 41, verses 42 and 43. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in the garments of fine linen, put a gold chain around his neck, and he had him ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried out before him, bow the knee, so he set him over all the land of Egypt. He gave him authority, and the ring represented that. In Esther 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 8, uh, the king, Ahasuerus, is talking to Mordecai and to Esther, and he says, write a decree for the Jews as you please in the king's name, and seal it with the king's signet ring, for a letter which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring, no one can revoke. Why? Because the ring represented authority. So we have representations even of authority today. But what I wanna focus in on in this message is that, that ring of authority that the father gave the son, okay? But let me just to talk about for authority for a moment. Um, Pastor Olin is, Pastor Pastor Olin Griffin is one of our apostolic elders. He pastored Shady Grove Church, where I was a member before I started Gateway Church, and where I was on staff and served as an elder there as well. And, uh, but Pastor Olin, one Sunday was preaching, and he said, in my younger life, when I was younger, I could stop an 18-wheeler with one hand. And we all kind of just sat there like, is this guy smoking something or what, you know? But what some people didn't know was, before he was a pastor, he was a Texas state trooper. <laughs> and he said, I could stand in the middle of the highway and hold up one hand and stop an 18-wheeler. Why? because he had a symbol of authority, which was a badge. He, uh, one time he said, he uh, well, walked up to a guy that was parked somewhere where he shouldn't have been and he was sleeping. He had his cap over his eyes and he, he had his windows down and he said to him, uh, sir, you can't park here. And the guy had the cap over his eyes so he didn't realize who was talking to him. So he said, who says I can't park here? And Olin said, the state of Texas says you can't park here. And the guy lifted his hat up, saw the Texas State Trooper standing there and said, yes, sir. <laughs> what he was saying was he had authority, but it wasn't his authority. The whole state of Texas was behind him when he spoke. Now I want you to think about that. <laughs> the Father gives us authority. So when we're rebuking the enemy from our family, it's not our authority, it's his authority right? Jesus comes on the scene with authority. Look at this, Mark 1, And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You need to know something about authority, by the way. All authority is delegated. Romans 13 says, verse 1, all authority is from God. So all authority is delegated except God's authority. He, he, his authority derives from himself. 
but all authority on this earth is delegated. So it's all delegated. So, so the father in this parable of Luke 15 delegates authority back to the prodigal son. But as a son or a daughter, can we not walk in that authority? And how do we walk in that authority and how do we use that authority? So I wanna share three things with you, all right? Number one is humility. The quickest way you'll lose authority is to walk in pride because it's not your authority. It's his authority. Jesus showed up with humility. Now, I could have taken each point and shown you something about how Jesus represented it, but I didn't have time to do that. So I just so you understand Jesus exemplifies all three of these. Humility, he lays down all of his divinity and becomes a, a, a human, okay? That's humility, all right? But let me just show you humility and some others and the authority that they had. So Luke 9 verse one says, he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Now, many people say, yes, he gave the 12 apostles, disciples, or apostles, we call them, the 12 apostles authority. That's Luke 9. But some people don't realize what happened in Luke 10. In Luke 10, verse 1, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also. And let me tell you something about these 70 others. They were baby Christians. New believers. And if you read on down, I, again, I just have time to do all the scriptures, but he gives them the same authority that he gives the 12 apostles. The new baby Christians. And then they come back, look at verse 17. Then the 70, the 70 return with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your, night, in your name. And he said to them, wow. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> I said, I just think how crazy that is to tell Jesus, did you know even demons are subject in your name? And Jesus go like, really? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> no, his actual response was, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So here, here's what he's saying. Listen, when Satan crossed my dad, he was out. Like that. This doesn't surprise me that they're gonna bow to my name because I know who I am. I'm my father's son. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And then watch what he says. And he said to them, behold, I give you the authority. Now remember, these are the 70, and I'm gonna show you again in a minute how they are, they, the, they are baby Christians. They are new believers. I'll show it to you. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions that represent demons and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice, watch, because your names are written in heaven. I told you they were believers. They, they, their names wouldn't be written in heaven if they weren't believers. And you say, well, how do you know they were new believers? The next verse. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things, now we're gonna go talk about these things, from the wise and the prudent, watch, and revealed them to babes, new Christians, babies. Even so, Father, it seemed good in your sight. And what was hidden? I just want you to notice, what were they talking about? They were talking about authority over demonic spirits. And here's what he was saying. Thank you, Lord, that you've revealed this to just baby Christians, but you've hidden it from the people who think they're smart. From the prideful, arrogant people, this is hidden. But the ones who are just babies, who are walk in humility, they understand this, that they have authority in my name. Um, some of you know when, after I had been saved just a little while, I started traveling with James Robinson, who's one of our apostolic elders, and he was doing crusades back then. And I would go in and preach in churches before he would come, and then I would do school assemblies on drugs and alcohol and things like that and funny stuff, and then I would invite the kids, I'd meet with the athletes afterwards, and I'd invite them to invite the whole school to like a youth night at the crusade, and we'd have churches make pizzas, and then a bunch of young people would come and get saved. So I did that for a few years for James. So uh, then, during that time, James Robinson uh, talks, and, and he talks about this openly in one of his books and still talks about it, 
but he started learning about demonic spirits and how we could be in bondage even though we're Christians. And so he began to preach on that. When he would preach on it, he would then pray like a prayer of deliverance. Sometimes, at, uh, when he would pray that prayer of deliverance, um, so, uh, so, like a demonic spirit might manifest, and we had kind of set up where we could take that person to another room and pray more extensively with them because Satan will try to draw attention to himself. If you remember in scripture, he would try to do that, and Jesus said, told him, be quiet. You know, you're not gonna draw attention to yourself, okay? So that happens sometimes. So one time, James was praying, and this uh, lady, these, these demons begin to manifest. They took her to another room, uh, and he was still, James was still doing the altar ministry time, and someone came and got me and said, hey, there's a lady, and she's manifesting demons, and they said, go get Robert Morris, he can handle this. Well, immediately it was like the enemy just, just is, that, is that all phone, our phones going off? <laughs> okay, just push the button on the side and, and pray for whatever it is, all right? Okay, bless them, Lord, whatever it is, all right. All right, press the button. <laughs> okay, is it something we need to pray about now? Okay, I'm just making sure. It's no tornado overhead or anything. Okay, all right, all right. So anyway, so they, they said, go get Robert Morris. He can handle this or something like that. So here, here's what I remember. I remember thinking about, they said they can't get the demons to come out of this woman, so they said, come get you. Well, I'm walking down there, and pride starts welling up in my heart, you know? They, 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 they got to bring in the spiritual person now the one that really understands deliverance, you know? I even remember thinking about when the disciples couldn't cast the demons out of the young boy, remember? And they had to call Jesus in, you know? So here they're having to call me in now, you know, to, to fix this, you know? So I walk into the room. Now, this woman is sitting in a chair, and there are men on both sides of her actually holding her down because the, of these demonic spirits, right? Now, just stay with me on this, okay? Now, this woman was a, a big woman. Now, I don't mean heavy set, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm simply factually describing that she was big, okay? She was strong. She was tall. She was athletic. She, you know, she was just big, okay? That's all, that's all I'm trying to tell you, all right? So, she's, she's holding, these men are holding her arms, and she's growling. Now, Every time I tell one of these stories, I think about our first time guest. <clears throat> okay, we, do, we don't believe in growling at Gateway, okay? We don't teach growling in our new member classes. We don't, okay, we, okay this is a, a, just a kind of a one-off story, all right? This was a weird thing that happened, but it happened, okay? All right, all right, so I walk in, the, uh, the door, she's there facing that way. Two men are holding her arms. When I walk in, this is what I remember, she threw these men off of her. And it's like there was a wall behind them and they hit that wall and kind of slid down the wall. She turned and looked at me and a voice came out of her that was not her voice and looked right at me and said, I've been waiting for you. All the pride left. <laughs> I was scared to death. <laughs> and I was, I didn't know whether to run out of the room or what. I mean, I just stood there frozen in fear. And all of a sudden, I heard this little voice say, stop it, just like that. And I looked, and I remember she's sitting there, I'm here, in the, over here in the corner was a little elderly lady that weighed about 97 pounds. And I looked at her, and she went, this lady, she said, stop it. And she had, her finger was like, I don't know why your finger, <laughs> as you get older, curves. I don't know, but 
I just remember the curved finger and this 97 pound woman. And she starts walking up to this lady, and she's, but she's not talking to the lady, she's talking to the spirit. And she said, you stop it right now, you stop talking, you stop making a scene, and you let this precious woman go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the word of God and by the blood of the lamb. And when she got up to, when she finished, she was about this far from this lady's face. And she put her hand up on her face and she said, it's okay, sweetie, they're gone. And they were gone. And that woman just started, they just started hugging. I'm watching, just, just. And then I went and changed my shorts and then went. She had authority because she walked in humility. I had no authority because I was walking in pride. So number one is humility. Here's number two is faith. Matthew 8, verse 5. Now when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. Century cent, uh, means a hundred. Sent as a Roman soldier over a hundred men. The centurion came and said, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said, I will, said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. And I love how words will jump out at you from the Bible, and I want this one to jump out because we're gonna come back to it. Watch what he says in verse nine. For I also, also, remember the word also. I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said to those who followed, assuredly, I say to you, I've not found such great faith, not even in Israel. In other words, not even among my people. This is a Roman. It's not even a Jewish person. And he's got great faith. Why do he have great faith? Because he understood authority. Here's what's amazing. Jesus said, I'll come and heal your servant. Heal your servant. He said, no, you don't need to. Just speak the word. Because I also am a man under authority. And I have those under me. Here's what he's saying. I recognize that you are under authority. Therefore, you have authority. I also am a man under authority. I also, just like you, just like you're under authority, Jesus, I'm under authority. So I have authority because I'm under authority. And he had faith because he understood that. Now, this is what the Lord showed me something about faith this week, never seen it before. Never seen it. I've been preaching almost 40 years now. I know faith is the word belief. It's the same word many, many times in Scripture. Many, many times, uh, uh, you're, you'll, uh, it'll be translated faith, and the same word will be translated believe somewhere else. Put your faith in Christ, believe in Christ. Same thing. Faith is what you believe. Okay. So this week, um, I was talking to you about Debbie's here in the service. Some of you might have seen on social media. So on Monday, we're in the kitchen, and she said to me, um, you know, I'm coming up on the fifth day of the flu, and uh, the fourth week of shingles, and you know, one uh, doctor said five to seven days on the flu, one doctor said four to six weeks on shingles, one said six to eight, but she's holding on to the five days and the four weeks, you know, the lower numbers, you know, and I understand. And so she says, so tomorrow I'm gonna be well. Tomorrow I'm gonna be well. So we're in the kitchen, we have this conversation. I walk out to the garage, about five minutes later, she walks out, she's crying, and as she rounds the car, I can see she has a towel and her hands are bleeding. What happened was she was washing a vase with soap and water, a big flower vase. It fell because of being soapy. She went to grab it. We have a concrete sink. It hit the bottom of the sink. She's trying to grab it. She basically just shoved her fingers into shards of glass. And I'm gonna show you a picture So I'm giving you a spoiler alert. So if, if you pass out at the sight of blood, don't look, okay? I'm giving you the alert. 
But this is, they, she had to get both hands treated. This was just one. This is after they had sewn up her finger and her thumb. You can see both of them have stitches, but you can also see the blood underneath. Okay. So then they had to fix the other hand as well. She cut three fingers and a thumb. We're going, to, we're going to the ER for the third time in 30 days. And while I was walking in, I can tell you the thought that rose up in me, it's not, it wasn't a good thought, I understand that, but it just, it, it led me to a good place. But we're walking into the ER and I just said, Satan, why don't you fight like a man? If you wanna fight, quit, quit coming after my wife. But then I started thinking about this, why am I not being able to cover her, though? I'm her covering. Why, why am I not being able to cover her? What, what is it? Is there an open door in my life? And if you remember, I, I I'd had one word from the Lord. Why all this warfare? The Lord said, because we're winning. Okay, so, but I'm saying, Lord, what's the warfare? What, what's the open door in my life? Now, listen to me. Remember, faith is what you believe. It's not what you say. It's what you actually believe. So the Lord told me, and I preached a message a few weeks ago called Stop Believing Lies. He said, you believe two lies. One is when all this started, you started, you started believing this is just normal. I mean, shingles, people get shingles. So this is normal. And then she got a urinary tract infection. This is normal. The ladies get uh, UTIs. This is normal. She got the flu. This is normal. Flu's going around. This is normal. He said, you just believe, you start believing it's normal. So that's one lie. Second lie, even though you knew it was warfare, you were believing a lie because you didn't quite understand warfare, son. So please hear me. <laughs> this is so good. You've got to hear this. He said, yes, it's normal for the enemy to war against my children, but it's not normal for my children to lose. Amen. That's not normal. And he started taking me through the Bible, just a few things. He said, yes, the Egyptian army followed the Israelites, but they also drowned. Yes, Daniel got thrown in the lion's den, but I shut the mouths of the lions. Yes, the children of uh, Israel went into the fiery furnace, but they came out and their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. All through scripture, yes, there's warfare, but we win. So here's what he, the Lord said to me. He said, you believe, well, this is just normal because Gateway Church, beginning 2020, and we're, Jimmy and I are gonna be sharing more with you about this. We're about to take more ground for the kingdom and we're in a better place to take ground for the kingdom than we've ever been. And so it was like, I was just believing that the warfare at the first of the year was normal. And this is what the Lord said to me. It is normal for him to attack. It is not normal for the attacks to get through. The shield of faith what you believe quenches every flaming arrow of the enemy. Every flaming arrow of the enemy. And so we, we called our intercessors. We have seven precious families that pray for us. We called our intercessors. We had them come over to the house Tuesday night. We had Pastor Tim Shepherd come over and led worship, walked around the house, prayed over Debbie. Then we had, uh, we're having the elders come this Tuesday night. So the Lord, I, I'm telling you, yes, warfare is normal but losing is not normal. You can't believe that, are you, are you hearing me? So here, I'm, I'm a pastor, and yet I'm still learning. But I had believed something, so I'd lost my faith because I was believing the wrong thing. So that's the second is faith, and here's the third is obedience. This is how you walk in authority. Matthew 21, verse 23. Now when he came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching. And they said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Who gave you this authority? Jesus answered and said to them, I, I, love, I just love Jesus. He's just such a cool guy, you know. He said, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, I'll ask you guys a question. You get mine right, I'll give you my answer. If you don't, everyone here will know you're an idiot. All right. <laughs> the baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned among themselves saying, well, if we say it's from heaven, it will say to us, then why then did you not believe him? 
But if we say for men, we fear the multitude, for all count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, we don't know. And he said to them, well, I'm not gonna answer you either then. <laughs> Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Okay, now here's the, the, the thing I wanna bring out, is that there's a, 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 like a paragraph there in the Bible, but that's actually not where the conversation ended. Because let me show you the very next part, the first part of the next verse. Look at this, verse 28. But what do you think? But what do you think? And then he tells a story. It's okay, so now let's just go back for just a moment. I'm just, they said, by what authority do you do these things? Who gave you this authority? So he makes a point, and then he says to him, but, but what do you think? Where do you think I got this authority? Let me, let me tell you how I got this authority. You, you follow me? So you can't stop there. You gotta keep reading. All right, but watch, verse 28. But well, what do you think? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he regretted it and went, or repented and went. And then he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two, watch this phrase, did the will of of his father. They said to him the first. Jesus said to them, assuredly, I say to you that tax collectors and harlots, prostitutes, enter the kingdom of God before you. Now he's making a couple of points. One is he's saying, you said you would obey the father, but you didn't. They said they wouldn't, but they are. Because I've come now and they're, they're listening to me, they're receiving me. So they're gonna go to heaven before you. Now, remember, I love grammar. You know, so before you, he's just clarifying the sentence. He's saying they're gonna go to heaven. <laughs> Prostitutes, they're gonna go to heaven. Why? Because they regretted it, and then they started following God. They repented and started following God. Remember the prodigal son? Repented and started, okay. But here's what he's, he's answering the question. They said, where'd you get this authority? Who gave you this authority? Here's what he said. You know how I got this authority? by doing the will of the Father. I got it from the Father. You, you, what do you think? Where, where do you think I got it? I'll just tell you a story. One guy didn't do what his father said, one guy did. Where do you think I got this authority? Are, are y'all are following me? I'm just telling you that even as a believer, even as a believer, you can, you can have a ring of authority, but you can walk in pride and you have no authority. Or you can believe a lie and you lose your authority. Or you can walk in disobedience and rebellion and you lose your authority. Are y'all following this? Am I making it clear? Okay. So, uh, my daughter Elaine, I have three children, Josh, James, Elaine. My daughter Elaine, when she was about 16 or 17 years old, began to rebel. But she did it secretly. She came to church, went to youth, did all that but she wanted to see what the world had to offer. And for a little over two years, she lived in rebellion and she lived in sin. I have a real burden of, and I talked to Elaine last night on the phone and said, can I share this please? And she said, yes. I have a burden for some young people here. Now, won't you listen to me? You might still be living at home but you might be like one of these sons. You might be saying, yeah, I'm doing the right thing, but you know in your heart you're not doing the right thing. And that's what my, my daughter was doing. You might be saying and showing, and everyone on the outside thinks that you're a good Christian boy or a good Christian girl, but you're not. Here's the problem. you're opening the door to the enemy in your life. I'm not, it doesn't matter what your age is. At some point, you begin making your own decisions even if you don't tell your parents. But if you start making your own decisions and you start choosing to walk away from God, you're gonna suffer consequences. Our daughter started getting these cluster migraine headaches 
It's where you not only have one migraine in your system, but you have four or five, and they cluster together. Stephen Melody would come to the hospital, and we watched our daughter scream in pain, and they couldn't stop that pain. We didn't know what was going on. But when she repented, no more migraines. Even though she was living in our home, unmarried, under the age of 18, that, that doesn't matter. I've got a burden for you young people. If you're making decisions to not follow God, even if you're doing it in secret, you're opening the door to the enemy. So Elaine repented. Steve was actually, Steve and Melody went to dinner and she repented. She repented with them at dinner. She repented, gave her life truly to the Lord. One month later, she met Ethan, the man of her dreams, and next weekend, she and Ethan are planting Gateway Church, Houston. All turned around. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to think about if the enemy is attacking you and some of his arrows are getting through, is it an open door of pride in your life? Is it an open door of believing a lie, not having your faith fully and wholly in the Lord? Believing something's just normal when it's not normal for his children? Or is it an area of disobedience? And I, I never want you to feel uh, shame at church, never at all, shame or condemnation. But I do want you to feel conviction when the Holy Spirit convicts you and then simply do like the prodigal son, come to yourself, come to your senses and turn your heart toward home. When we talk about walking in obedience, it doesn't mean doing everything right or perfect or being perfect humans, it just means where's your heart turned? Turn your heart toward home. And we wanna pray with you. If you're going through a difficulty right now, if you're a, a I talked to some young people, but that goes for all of us. Once you start making your own decisions, if you're making some decisions that aren't right right now, and the enemy is coming after you, we wanna pray with you. 